Let me thank the organizers for inviting me again to share the excitement about photoacoustic tomography, a fast-growing technology that breaks through the limits of both optical diffusion and diffraction. Why do we use light? Unlike ionizing radiation, visible and IR light is safe for human imaging. Fundamentally speaking, light occupies the only region of the vast EM spectrum that allows us to probe molecules. Light has provided um, provided imaging of all sorts of biomolecules, including nucleic acids, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and others. We've used light to provide in vivo functional imaging, metabolic imaging, molecular imaging, and even label-free histologic imaging. However, in optical microscopy, resolution hits a wall. Diffraction limits the, limits the focal diameter to half of the wavelength. Optical penetration presents even more challenges. Wavefront aberration limits classical microscopy to tens of microns of penetration. Modern optical microscopy has beaten this limit, but is still limited by diffusion to one millimeter of penetration. This diffusion limit has been overcome by photoacoustic tomography, which, however, is limited by dissipation to centimeters of penetration. Wavefront engineering with the internal guide stars, a recent innovation, promises to conquer the dissipation limit and approach the absorption limit for whole body penetration in humans. Photoacoustic tomography combines light and sound to enhance penetration and resolution. When it's implemented in the form of computed tomography, a broadened laser beam illuminates the tissue. Absorption of any photons, scattered or not, generates heating and subsequent acoustic emission. Ultrasonic detection of the acoustic waves provides resolution for high resolution imaging. Essentially, we see the optical absorption contrast by listening to the object. While using scattered photons for acoustic excitation advances penetration, using unscattered phonons for image formation enhances resolution. First published in 2003, functional photoacoustic tomography imaged brain functions of rodents through an intact scalp. This pair of early images shows one-sided whisker movement hemodynamically activating the contralateral side of the brain. This unprecedented, non-invasive functional imaging launched our field into exponential growth. The burgeoning conference on photoacoustics is evidence of this growth. Since 2003, its size has doubled every three years. Since 2009, this conference has become the largest in this, in this photonics west. The growth is driven largely by the unique capability of photoacoustic tomography for multi-scale in vivo imaging with consistent contrast. In current practice, while organelles and cells are imaged with optical contrast, tissues and organs are imaged non-optically, impeding image correlation on multiple lens scales. Photoacoustic tomography bridges the gap from organelles to organs, promising to impact biology and clinical translation across scales. I'll introduce a couple of representative photoacoustic imaging systems. For macroscopic imaging, a clinical ultrasound system has been adapted for concurrent photoacoustic tomography. Here, optical fibers flank handhold probe for light delivery. 
using a single laser shot, a 2D image is acquired within 100 microseconds. For microscopic imaging, this first 3D photoacoustic microscopy system achieved tens of microns of resolution over three millimeters of penetration. The laser beam on the skin is donut shaped to minimize surface interference. An ultrasonic transducer is aligned confocally with the optical peak to maximize SNR. Again, a single laser shot yields a 1D image and raster scanning produces a 3D image. Next, I'll highlight selected images in the order of penetration or resolution. The clinical system I just showed provides up to seven centimeters of penetration with, with a safe laser exposure. A three centimeter deep breast tumor was imaged in vivo by both ultrasonography and photoacoustic tomography. Our in vivo human studies indicate the potential of photoacoustic tomography to convert breast cancer staging from open surgery to needle biopsy. Here's the concept. First, FDA approved organic dyes injected into the breast. Second, the sentinel, namely the first draining lymph node, is pinpointed photoacoustically with optical contrast from the dye. Third, a needle biopsy is guided to sample the node. Finally, the biopsy cells are examined for the presence of metastasis. <clears throat> Excuse me. Despite the difficulty of transcranial ultrasonography in adults, transcranial photoacoustic tomography has proven feasible due to its one-way ultrasonic propagation. Its promise for sub-millisecond imaging of human brain function is simply exhilarating. The whole body of a small animal can be imaged in 3D, in vivo, using endogenous contrast, allowing repeated safe imaging for drug discovery or similar longitudinal studies. Complementary to functional MRI, photoacoustic tomography can image resting state functional connectivity between the two hemispheres of animal brain at high resolution. Gold nanoparticles are excellent photoacoustic contrast agents due to their large absorption cross-sections. Nano cages were found to accumulate around the tumor due to its enhanced permeability. Further, nano cages were modified for molecular imaging by targeting a hallmark of melanoma, enhancing the contrast by threefold. While standard optical endoscopy images only the surface of the esophagus or colon, photoacoustic endoscopy images up to seven millimeters of depth, enabling detection of deeper lesions. Even the tiniest blood vessels in the skin can be imaged by optical resolution photoacoustic microscopy. A close-up reveals capillary beds, single capillaries, even single red blood cells. In addition, oxygen saturation in single blood vessels is imaged as well, providing vessel-by-vessel -vessel oximetry. We've advanced oximetry to the ultimate single cell resolution. Here's a demonstration at 1 hertz, 20 hertz B-scan rates. At 200 hertz, single red blood cells are imaged in vivo in real time. Dave, would you play the video, a petulant one? This movie shows you oxygen release from single red blood cells monitored by photoacoustics on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. Capillaries in a finger cuticle have been imaged in vivo in humans. The steepest gradient of oxygen saturation at the tip of the capillary indicates where most oxygen is released. Through an intact scalp, Brain cortical vessels in small animals were imaged by photoacoustic computed tomography. 
through an intact skull without skin. Even finer capillary skull resolution was provided by photoacoustic microscopy. Cell nuclei have been imaged by photoacoustic microscopy without labeling, providing histology-like images. Unlike conventional histology, photoacoustic histology is label-free, in vivo, and rapid, allowing intraoperative tumor demarcation. Recently, nonlinear photoacoustic nanoscopy has conquered optical diffraction with a lateral resolution of 90, nanome 90 nanometers, resolving suborganelle stru structures in a single mitochondrion without labeling. For further information, please refer to my YouTube presentations, website, and books. In closing, I'm required to disclose my financial interest in two companies which have commercialized photoacoustic tomography. Thank you.